and I'm so excited we're doing this. Um, I feel like everyone on my two knows Katie really well. She's like famous, um, Instagram famous, it works famous. But I don't know if everyone knows your story. And so I figured you could just go ahead right off the bat and talk to everyone about it. And yeah, I'd love to. Okay, so I was that girl who tried the product first before joining the company. Um, but I didn't even know that there was an opportunity at hand. I just actually was crying about my hair. And it was really thin and brittle. And so I went to my dermatologist actually do some blood testing and everything came back normal I thought I had a hormone imbalance problem was freaking out about it um, but it came out normal and she was like you just need a supplement to help your hair grow and I felt like I had tried everything you know there was biotin and hair and nails from Walmart or whatever nothing worked until finally I got my hands on the it works hair skin and nails and I had to reach out to a random girl from high school and I had no idea who she was really. I just wanted this product bad enough. I tried it and loved it so much. I actually had my best friends ordering through this girl until a few like months later, um, Julia, who was in FIMU with me, it's a sorority in college, was selling for the company. And I was like, oh, you can actually sell and like, make money? This is cool. So I put two and two together, sat down with her at Panera, joined three days later, um, I will say I was very hesitant, very scared, but it was the best leap of faith of my life. And here's why. Okay, so after I joined, I was like super on fire. I was just so excited, and I bought the mini booster kit. And I was nervous because that was a lot of money for me as a college student. And so I went and put my business cards at all the hair salons around Knoxville. And like the next day later, I had $275 cash in my pocket simply because some random lady came next door to the boutique I was working at, um, which tells a little bit more about my story. When I joined, I was 20 years old. I was working three jobs. I was taking 19 credit hours at the University of Tennessee, and I was also in the story Find You. And on top of that, I was a leader of the student ministry called The Cross. So my life was living out of my car, super crazy, um, just always hectic life, but I knew that I wanted something better for myself, and I knew that this opportunity could be something that I would be good at. Um, so I got started, fell in love, I went Ruby, I earned the $1,000 bonus that was offered at the time, and then shortly after, Ryan also got his $1,000 Ruby bonus, and we were just a power couple. Um, I'm going to go into kind of that story, though, where right after we both went Ruby, we kind of hit this standstill. And I sat there for nine months at Ruby, and I didn't know what to do or where to turn, and I kind of felt like just giving up. I'll be so blunt with you guys and say that, like, I just got so upset and frustrated, and all I wanted to do was blame everything else but myself. And I couldn't realize for the longest time that this was my business and I had work to do if I wanted to take this to the top. And I began to realize that everybody else was able to do it. Why couldn't I? Same thing you need to ask yourself right now. Why can't you? Because you can. And so I took that vision. I went to conference and after conference and I had no money. Let me just tell you guys, you just go. You just go to conference. And I was a broke college student. I skipped class. Yes, I did. And I did it anyways. I even, like, failed one of my quizzes. And I was like, whoops, oh, well. Um, so you just go. I don't even know how to put it into words because I went in as a Ruby making $500 extra a month. And I came out, and I double promoted from Ruby to Emerald to Diamond in February. And then I went double Diamond the very next month. And so far, that's just been my journey in this company and where I've been in the past year and a half. And just saying to you guys that even if you have a busy lifestyle, a busy schedule, you can do this. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on, on what it was like for me as a college student, because I think a lot of people sometimes are like, you know, what is that like? It was busy. It was crazy. It was hectic. But you can do it. I promise you. You just have to have that strong enough why, and that why will take you as far as you want to go. I love that. I remember meeting you at conference. That was the first time we ever met. And you were in that green dress. And they were like, I like got introduced to you. And somebody was like, yeah, she, and you said, I'm a Ruby. 
they're like, yeah, but she won't be for long. She's about to go crazy. And like, you literally did. I remember that very vividly. And I was, I mean, comrades, I, I have tried to tell them at my team, like it is a game changer. Like, and, and I, a lot of them have been to green carpet, but not conference. And I was like, it's so different. Like, it, yeah. That's where it's at. <laughs> yeah, see, I've never been to a green carpet until this year, but I've been to a conference and I was like, this is nothing. Like, I was like trying to tell my team, I was like, this is nothing. Like, you all have no idea. It's so I was sobbing. My legs were like shaking like this. I mean, I had never been so excited in my life. And then I just came back and I put in the action, I put in the work, and that's what is needed in this business. You know, um, a lot of times I tell my team, do not treat this like a hobby treat it more like a business where you work it every single day. Mm -hmm. And that's where consistency comes in. And one of my biggest quotes that I've said since day one, and I bet you my whole team can quote it back to me, <laughs> confidence plus consistency equals currency. Oh, I like it. Yes. Um, Dan and I thought about that when I was kind of going through that tough time. I was like, there's no secret to success. I'm like, oh, I'm so mad. Like, why is there not like a secret? But I needed, like, for myself to come up with a secret to understanding how I could do the best I could every single day. Oh, Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm a type that's really excited in the first place, like my personality and everything. But sometimes I was very not so confident underneath it all. And I think that's where I started to lose my vision and my hope. And so that confidence is the very first thing that you need in this business is to be excited. You've got to be confident. Even if you don't know what you're talking about, who the frick cares? You'll figure it out and you'll do awesome and they won't be able to tell. And then consistency. If you're not working your business every single day, then how are people going to see that you are trustworthy? And that is the biggest thing I'm going to talk about with signing people up. They have to see that you're serious, you're trustworthy, because I wouldn't have joined Julia if I didn't like love her as a sister or a friend. Um, people don't join my team unless they know I'm going to care for them as a leader. And so that's the same thing. That's that main kind of like Katie's key to success, but there really isn't one. So um, I hope that little quote helps you guys. I stole my quote from Stephanie Dunn. I just literally love it so much. Because when I think of her being number one, and she said one time, it, it stuck with me. It's not that they can and I, they can't and I can. It's that I will when they won't. And I'm like, every time I sit down to do something, I'm like, I've got to do what others don't. I've got to take that extra step that they're not willing to take. And that's what's going to make it in the long run or whatever. But I yeah. love that. Okay. Um, so... I don't want to bore my team to death, but I know your team's on here and probably has no idea, you know, anything about me. So I'm just going to make it real short. But basically, I joined two years ago, two and a half years ago now, and I was um, a new mom. I had a six-month-old, and more than anything, I just kept seeing Caitlin winning these bonuses, and I was like, what is she doing with all that money? Like, how does she have all that sitting in an account at our age? And I signed up thinking, I'm going to get that $10,000 bonus. You had three months to go dive and you got $10,000. And I was just convinced I was going to do it. Like, I had no doubt. And at the end of that three months, I did not have a single distributor. I had a lot of little customers but no distributors. So, obviously, I did not get the diamond bonus. Um, and it took me two more months to sign my first distributor. And whenever she joined, um, there was multiple that joined the same night, actually. And... It kind of, we all kind of ran together. It was so fun. Like, I became kind of obsessed with wanting them to be successful, too, because I felt like they trusted me with that $99. I didn't want them to not be successful. I wanted them to actually be glad they joined. And my why has changed so much over time. Like, when I first joined, it was because I really wanted to spend money on baby clothes. And it, actually, I still want to spend money on baby clothes. But um, right after I joined – like a month after I found out I was pregnant again, but then I knew I was going to be spending even more money and I needed to make up for that. <clears throat> but um, after they joined, we all got excited together and we were doing parties and not really rap parties. We had a lot of opportunity parties here and we were just oh, meeting, wow. we were discussing yeah. our dreams, we were having goal wow. parties. Like we were very, very like running together and um, I promoted to Ruby the next time, <laughs> Emerald, after, right after I signed them, Emerald in uh, November, Diamond in December, I went, I had my little, my son, my husband in January, I had my um, daughter in February, and I went double that month. In March, my husband went Diamond, and then in May, my husband went, um, he went, wait, no, May, I went triple. 
And then he went double this year in March. And we got the double bonuses on all of them except for my diamond bonus, which was, like, incredible. Um, and I can honestly say – I have done a lot of things wrong, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things wrong. I've made placing errors. I've done, I've not been as good about parties as I should be. There's lots of things I should have done differently. But one thing that I can say that I really am proud of is that I've really been consistent with my posting. I've been very consistent with my follow-ups. Um, I like have no doubt that when people like think about joining me, they know I'm not going to quit. Like they never think, oh, she might not do this anymore. Like I feel like everyone knows, like I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not ever going to quit. And I think that's sometimes why people decide to finally join is because they know at least she's going to be there. Like she's not going to flake. And so even if you just started out in the very beginning, you can make that commitment to let them know you're in it for the long haul. It's when you give that vibe that I'm just trying it. We're going to see how it goes. I'm going to just kind of do it for fun. That's when people aren't really wanting to join your team because they want someone that's invested. And it doesn't mean that you've been doing it for years. Just that you're your committed and then they can do that. Very so, um, let me see. I first. That's pretty cool. Is that, okay, okay. I was like, I've been trying to figure out who it was that wasn't muted, but I think you're. I think I figured it out. But um, so our team had some questions for Katie, and she, like, kind of has been a little bit more in prep for him. So, um, do you want me to read them to you, Katie, or do you want to go with it? Um, either way, um, works. I could start with the few that you kind of gave me okay. and just go off of that. Um, I kind of wanted to start with my daily schedule because for the longest time, guys, when I was in college, because I've kind of done both things. I've done it while in college, and then I've done it when I'm literally retired, 22 years old, sitting at home all day long. And at first I was like, this is weird. What do I do with myself? So um, I've kind of got both stories with that, with being very busy and then not busy at all. So. Um, when I was in college, I'll talk about that really briefly, um, I would always work my business in any downtime that I had. Literally being blunt with you guys, sitting on the toilet, always working my business. Always walking to class, always working my business. Always like um, eating lunch, always working my business. Um, another thing that I wanted to tell you guys was time management. Um, I always had classes, like, I mean, 19 credit hours. I was always taking a lot of classes, and I always had a lot of homework. And so time management came into play, and I had to get a calendar to manage that. So if you don't have a calendar, get one and definitely figure out when you're going to work your business versus when you're going to do all your other activities. And so in that aspect, I would plan out my week on Sunday night, and I still do that to this day. I plan out my entire week, even if it's as silly as going to the movies. Like, I'm weird like that. I have to plan out my entire week. Um, and if I had a lot of tests, I would have to study for several days and just pack up that study time so that when that test did come, I wasn't just cramming and freaking out. Um, because honestly, I would get distracted by my phone, so I'd have to turn it off in order to study, and I would just pack time throughout every single day of the week. So if, that, if anybody is in college on here, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, I would be posting and messaging all the time, walking to class or during class sometimes. You could just, like, have your laptop open. And I had, like, my, my messenger and my Facebook up um, sometimes. And I would just record the classes. That's another really good tip. Record the classes if you're in college. And then also go to your uh, professor for office hours all the time. So I would do that a lot. And then um, on the other hand of things, when I was retired after college, I never had to go get a job. And for me, that was like the craziest mind-blowing thing ever. I never had to give an interview. I never had to any of that. So when I first started this whole shindig, I was like, well, what do I do with myself if I'm working this business every single day? And the very first thing I just went back to doing was time management. That really helped me in college, and it's going to help me even if I have a lot more time. So what I do is every single Sunday, I plan out my week. You will see a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And every part has something that I'm doing. Okay, and the biggest thing that's going to help your business in addition to that is a six list. Okay, I do a six list every single day. And I'm going to screen share really quick to show you guys my notes on the left-hand side of my computer. Okay, hang on just one second. And um, just kind of show you guys. There we are. Do you guys see my computer? Um, this is my six list. I go through credit card declines. I have like a hit list, which is my like future entrepreneurs. 
I have perk points. I go through perk points every single month because I literally, I'm not kidding guys, found two people last month who had $400 or more in perk points. I was mind blown. Um, I have a December top 10 this month, so I go through all of that. Um, the first of every month, I always do something. I'm very organized in that aspect. When it's the first of every month, I will message all my current loyals because if you want to be a volume whore, yes, I said it, volume whore, you want to make sure to message all those current loyal customers and make sure they're loving their products. And to be honest with you guys, when I was in college, I did not do this. And I regret it because I wish I had started my business off on a bang with a lot of detailed organization. I really wish I had. And if you haven't done it yet, go get it. Go get it, girl. <laughs> um, another thing I'll always have on my computer is my fast starts or my calves because I will never, ever, ever lose $100. I will not. I always go really hardcore for that because that is $100 that – you know, Susan puts it into perspective when she's like, if someone put a $100 check on your table and you didn't go and grab it, like, what would that feel like? That'd be stupid, right? So don't be stupid. Get your calves and fast starts. Um, I'm really big at building relationships. So another thing I do is I send happy birthday messages every single day. So um, to show you kind of starting from the top what my six list is like, um, this is something that I do every day. I have a list of things I have got to do. And if I don't do it, I will beat myself up. So one, I do have a business page on Facebook. And so I will make a Limitless Life with Katie post. Um, I do both boost some of them, but I just now started doing this. So um, I don't have a lot of amazing advice on it. Um, another thing I will do is on Instagram, I build relationships and I turn on post notifications for anyone I find on my newsfeed that is like I've got to have them on my dream team like they have got to be on my team um used to I used to cold message a lot and I felt like I was just a shot in the dark trying to message people who um, were not really all that interested and I would get so overwhelmed with how many people I was talking to a day so now I just do um people who I want to build a relationship with because once they get on my team I want them to be my best friend too so that they can't be like hey, Katie, I'm done. Like, I quit. I want them to feel that bond with me as a team leader and as a person and as a best friend. Um, I'll message all current loyal customers. I'll do whatever other tasks I have. Um, Follow-up sheets, I'll go through those. Um, I do credit card declines every day. Some people do them at the very end of the month. I just go throughout every day. Um, there's a December top 10 and send happy birthday message. So that is my day-to-day -day thing as far as six list is. Um, I'm always in the office when it's daylight. So in the morning, I sit on my couch and I have coffee. I do my six list, so I plan that in the morning. I go through birthday messages. I will message any team members that message me throughout the night. I go through follow-ups, anything like that. And then I sit in the office and I do that like full-on intentional action work in the daytime. And then when it's dark outside, I go let myself sit on the couch and make dinner and kind of relax and work my business still on the couch. I love that. Uh, that's like, oh, I, I need to add a lot to my to-do list after seeing yours. Mine's like pretty basic. Um, I am not kidding. These kids are crazy. Just now, if you saw me talking, so I come downstairs for a drink. They're upstairs and they locked him out of the upstairs. And so he was like, obey. I had to be myself. He's like, bang on the door. Let me in. Unlock the door. And so I really to only work really hard when they're sleeping um, or when they're sleeping, basically. So I usually take nap time to do follow-ups. Um, I do, I make sure I post, obviously, and I can do that when they're running around. But I, every night when I'm, like, laying in bed or I take a bath before bed sometimes, and I will make sure I get all those follow-up messages for people that have liked my post for the day. I always try to do that every single night. I will actually usually, like, do it from, like, a few days ago. Like, I won't do it the same day, but I'll do, like, two days post. Two, go, two days ago's post, I'll go through and message for people that liked it. And I don't think that in the beginning, the reason that I, it took me a long time to find people to sign is because I was posting, but I wasn't asking. And I've learned there's such a huge difference. And then I have ha watched people on my team who have said, well, I'm messaging everyone, but they're not posting. And it, I've really realized like it has to be both. You can't do one or the other. It has to be both. That really makes a difference. And so I try to make sure I do all of those messages um, daily. And
I always try to do more, but if at the bare minimum, I'm going to post and I'm going to follow up. Like, that's the bare minimum. But I love your list, and I can definitely do better about some of those things that you're doing. That is so awesome. So um, that kind of, like, leads me into our, our next question for you is, like, how do you find your distributors and your little customers, like, when you're networking? Um, a lot of it is through Instagram. Um, I just now started the business page and I don't recommend that for anyone until you're like diamond or above because it does cost money and that's just not fun. Um, Instagram is a free way to do this. And I learned this after I, like I said, took that slump and I felt like I was stuck at Ruby and I'm going to tell you what, like I really rocked it with my warm market for a while. And what warm market is, is the people that you're closest to, your friends, your family, everybody on your Facebook at the time. And so I rocked it at first. And then I felt like I hit a wall and I didn't know what to do. And so that's when I literally started watching people on YouTube, finding people who inspired me. And that's when I figured out Instagram and I learned it all on my own. So I took on Instagram. I just started following. And the way that I follow is always different from day one. Like it was never the same. I would do it either through the places. So you can like type in like Charleston, South Carolina, and then follow people based on them posting to that location. Um, you can follow people based on tags, like hashtags. Um, you can follow people based on like that uh, magnifying glass and then there's people in there. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways. I don't have a specific way of doing it, but I do have a very awesome word of advice. Don't just go find and follow whoever. Um, find someone who's going to match you in a sense, like, because you want to think who would you want on your team? And if you want like that runner, that rock star, like don't go follow someone who may be like 16 years old, um, or maybe, and sometimes you can never tell who's 16 or who's 18 nowadays. Um, but I always try to find someone who may be like me in similar ways, like they like Chick-fil-A or they like um, this, that, or the other. Maybe they're a fine you. I used to do that a lot, find people who are fine you, because when I would talk to them, it was just such an easy way to build a relationship. Um, and the next step that I would do is I'm going to be um, like, totally serious and honest with them and very open and relationship based. Um, I hate scripts in a way like I'll use them and I have some great scripts to use and I think everybody on the zoom probably uses the same ones I use. Um, but I'm going to be open and honest with them from the start and direct message. I freaking hate it. And I'll tell them that I'm like, I hate Instagram direct message. Would you mind if we like added each other on Facebook or, you know, you have a text, I can like call you or whatever. Um, but most of the time I just try to get them on Facebook because I love the Facebook list. Do you guys know about the Facebook list where you can like put people into a list? If not, there's some videos on YouTube. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail tonight because that's a lot of information. But like if someone is a potential loyal customer and you got them right to Facebook, the very first thing I'm going to do is like talk to them about the product. I always send a voice message. I want them to hear my voice that I'm a real person and that I've got something awesome to share. Um, it helps me show my personality through that message. So I just signed up a loyal customer tonight, as a matter of fact, and it was through just voice messages. We were like voice messaging back and forth. So I love that. I hate Instagram direct. And I did it for the longest time and I couldn't figure out like what to do because it was so hard to organize it all. Um, but as far as finding people, find someone who that, who will relate to you and maybe who's you want on your dream team, because I have now 13,000 somewhat followers and I'll be honest, it didn't benefit me all that much. I used to tell my team like follow, 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 cause that's all I thought it was. But I am now having to go through and it's really hard because I'm trying to like, I don't want to say it like in a bad way, but weed people out in a sense, because you get to a certain point where Instagram only lets you have 7,500 people. So try to find people that are going to be beneficial to you and your team or anything like that. And that's so it. when I'm doing it, what I usually do to follow is a little different, which I love your way. Like it just shows that there's so many different ways or whatever. But like I really target moms because I'm a mom. And so what I will do is like, um, I'll find a, a either a clothing brand or a clothing store that my kids like that I love to dress my kids in. And a lot of the clothing for kids is like distinct. Like you'll know when there's like Kiki Pants Pajamas is an example I always use. And I know when somebody's put kids are in Kiki Pants Pajamas and I'll go to their, their followers and I'll like follow moms that follow it. And then like that kind of thing. So I'm connecting with someone and then I can say like, oh, I love this print or whatever, you know, something like that. 
So I was going to ask you, do, do you target like specifically either college or do you target moms? Do you do anything specific? Because I feel like I'd be easier for me to relate to, to moms, but I've also heard a lot of people like Sydney has said to me before that it's harder to get people that aren't moms to work as much. I have a few of my team that are absolutely rock stars that aren't moms, but I do have a majority of moms. So what do you think about that? Um, I actually battled this. Um, after I promoted to double, I felt like I was kind of pulling teeth and everybody was struggling with finals and things like that. And um, I think there's both ways. Of course, you know, I've got rock stars on my team that are in college as well. Um, but the majority, I would, I mean, as you guys know, sometimes I would sign up 10 distributors a month. And a lot of times they wouldn't work. Um, and I felt like I had to switch and change up my game plan. And I battled it a lot because I'm not a mom. And I, it's harder for me to relate. And that was my main thing. I want to relate to everybody that I ever talked to. So I battled that for sure. Um, but now my main thing is trying to follow moms. Because um, although I do love college students and I was one myself, um, I feel like they're why. I'll be so blunt on here. I'm so sorry if you're a college student. Like, I was too. So don't worry. But I'm being blunt with you and saying that, like, a lot of times moms – they fight for their children, and I mean, their why makes them cry, and I really feel like that is the strength that will add to your team, and so that's what I look for more. I just didn't know, because like, I know you have such a strong team, and I remember in back, I know it used to be a lot of college students, and I didn't know if you had kind of changed, or if it was still a lot of college students, because I had somebody that was not a mom asking specifically that, and I was like, well, she's the perfect person to ask, because she knows, so yeah. I was wondering about that. Okay, so what do you do when you sign distributors to get them started? Um, like I said, I'm always changing things up. I am never the same. I love to learn new things. And so recently, I've looked at what Susan does with her new distributors, and then I've looked at what other leaders are doing too, and then I combined it and made my own thing. So the very first thing that I really hated happened was that we don't have the $120 free product credit anymore. And I started to notice like a slump in motivation as soon as I would sign DTs. So I kind of made my own incentive and it's very recent, but I love it already. Um, the very first thing that I do is I congratulate them. I say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. And again, I'm talking on Facebook usually. So I will say three things. And these are my three incentives. And the reason I do three incentives is because one, if they hit that one incentive, then they still got the chance for two more. Um, but if they don't hit the one and they don't hit the second one, they still have the chance at the third one. And so it's kind of like pushing them like, okay, I didn't hit the first one. I'm not going to get bummed out. I'm going to go for the second. If I don't hit the second, I'm going to hit the third. Um, so the first incentive is like Susan does a $99. Um, if you get started as a new DT and you get your four low customers in 24 hours, I will literally personally give you $99 back. And at first I looked at Susan, I was like, uh, why are you serious? Like I, it took me 30 days to get my four little customers. And even then I didn't get all four. So, um, you know, and I still turned out okay. But, um, I do agree with Susan that it kind of gets them excited. Like if they really needed that $99 back, they are going to roll for it. So I've started doing that. The second incentive, if they don't get the first, it's not a big deal. And I've never had anybody bummed out about that. So the second one is, um, my, and I need to get it. Brian, will you get it? It's, um, it's what other leaders I've seen are doing, and I call it my girl boss Bible. Okay. So this has a bunch of information in it, and um, I do have it next to me. And it's all my organization, as well as, like, scripts I use and things like that. So this is just some um, current loyal customers. This would be, like, a sheet for them that I've already printed off. Um, I also have a potential distributor sheet, kind of like a hundreds list, but it's just like, you know, whatever. And it tells you like follow up one, follow up two, follow up three, follow up four, follow up five. So how many times I followed up with them. And then I have some other things like potential loyal customer sheets and things like that. Um, but the main reason I feel like for this is it really motivates people in that self-motivation aspect. They're like, I want that girl boss Bible. Like I need that because if that's the golden ticket, like I feel like people when they first start, they're like golden ticket. I need it. <laughs> so this really does have, you know, everything that they need to get started. There's a how to go Ruby aspect. It has anything and everything. Um, 
you know, how to chart, how to talk to people. There's some example posts in there. And what do they have to do to get that? What? What do they have to do to get that? To get this, they have to get their first four loyal customers in their first five days. Okay. Okay, so the first um, incentive is $99, and they get their four loyal customers in one day, 24 hours. Um, the second incentive, go for five days, get your first four loyal customers, you get this girl boss Bible. Okay. And then the third incentive is corporate. You know, get your four loyal customers in 30 days. This is the best one you can possibly get. $500 Ruby bonus eligibility. And I realized that I wasn't before telling a lot of my new distributors about that. I wasn't making them aware that like you thought 30 days, like be eligible because you will beat yourself up if you don't get that $500 you know, bonus. So I've loved this. I've recently just started it out. I've tried it. And um, another thing is I used to kind of sign anybody and everybody and I'm really working on kind of, um, Giving people when they first sign up, I send them a voice message with exactly what to expect. And I love it because it shows me, okay, look, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have um, people who say no to you. And I give them an example, okay? Success doesn't happen overnight. If you want to go work out in the gym and you've never worked out before, do you think you're going to look amazing the very next day? No, it's a journey. And I literally say that to them in a voice message and they – have always come back and said, wow, I love the motivation. I love the excitement. I'm ready. And so it's not really like a negative spin because I hate negativity and I won't want that. But it's like, hey, I'm not going to take crap. Here's what you're going to get. And um, here's an incentive to help you get it. Okay. So I love that. Um, so I feel like you've answered every, all the things that they had asked. Is, did, I, did I answer? We kind of both talked about following up. How to respond to odd questions is something else you had said to me. Um, and I don't know what odd questions like you're getting asked, but if you're just realistic and you're honest and you have, like, you can joke with them, you can just be serious. I mean, not be serious. You can joke with them and just be honest. Like, most people will respond well. And I heard something from um, that Pam Souter said that I love. And it said, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And so I was like, that is so true. Like, sometimes it's just not the right person, and you can't beat yourself up over that. But when it is the right person, you can't say the wrong thing to them. Anything you say is going to be perfect. And so that takes away a lot of the, the stress of talking to potentials, you know, and all that pressure that it puts on you that you have to be perfect. That's not true. You just have to be real. You just have to be honest. And you just, as long as you're relatable and personable, you're going to be great. So – um, and then with following up, that was the other thing you told me to address. I do try to, I used to always follow up on Fridays, but recently Kelsey Carter actually said that she follows up on Sundays because a lot of people are like, you know, hanging out at the house. It's not crazy. They're not going into the weekend and that she's gotten a lot of success from that. So I'm going to start doing Sundays, but I also follow up every single time any new promotions announced. Any type, anything is exciting, I will follow up again. I don't care if I followed up the day before. I'll be like, okay, well, I know I talked to you yesterday and you weren't ready yet, but did you hear about this Peppermint Bliss set? I'm obsessed with it. It's available for a limited time only. I can get you my discount. It has all this in it. It's such a great deal. I didn't want you to miss out on it, you know? Um, I follow up. Even if I followed up the Friday before, when the second comes around for distributors, I'll follow up again and say, okay, you know today's the day to get the absolute max amount of time to get that Ruby bonus you're going to every single day that you don't join is another day that you're lost working towards that, you know, and I continuously follow up them, but I do try to like make it seem like I'm only messaging them. Even if I do kind of use the same message for time purposes and just change something here or there, I always make sure that they think this was just to me. Um, and then something else I'll do is like, if I did follow up to let's say Tuesday was the second and I followed up and then there's Friday and I don't have anything new to tell them. I'll just check in with them as a person. I'll be like, hey, how's your pregnancy going? Or did you have, did you make a good grade on that test? Or are you going home for the holidays? Like stuff like that, you know, and just 
completely follow up, but don't even mention it works. And a lot of times they might even bring it up themselves without me saying anything about it. Or sometimes I don't even bring it up at all. I'll just like touch base and check in again next week. So I think follow up is like one of the most important things. And I realize sometimes when you're talking about organization, it's key. Like I am really bad about following up my loyal customers. I'm trying to get better about that, but, um, and, and my potentials too. I'm, I'm a lot better about distributors and I sign more distributors usually. So that just shows like where your follow-up is and what you're posting about is what you're going to, what you're going to attract. But I went this week trying to get those Christmas cash and I went through old messages and saw so many people that I, I had forgotten to write down. And as soon as I messaged them again, they were ready. And I was like, if I had written them down and followed up a long time ago, they would have already been a loyal customer. Like that was completely my fault. So I believe in follow up so much. Like I think it's so important. So I hope that that helps whoever wanted to know about that. <clears throat> but is there any other things that you wanted to cover that we forgot to address? Um, well, we wrote how to find potentials too, but if you wanted to go over kind of your aspect, but I think you kind of already did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally message every single person that likes my post um, on Instagram and Facebook. And then I also will, like, if I just see somebody that I just think has something that I'm looking for as a team member, they have, they're, anybody positive, I'm all about positive. Like, if they're just, every post is positive, if they have a lot of engagement, whatever, sometimes even if they're not showing interest in my post, I'll make sure to start interacting with them. I'll message them about things that aren't about it works and kind of build that relationship. And a lot of times they might even bring it up themselves because I don't want to hound people that aren't interested. But if they're going to be amazing at it, eventually I'm going to have to tell them because, I mean, they might not know they're interested, but they, when someone tells them that, hey, you'd be phenomenal, they might change their mind, you know? And I've had that a lot. Um, how many friends do I add daily? On Facebook, I don't add a ton, a ton of friends, but on Instagram, I try to do like, I mean, I'm five on Instagram, which I know is different than most people, but only because I have my kids, I want to be able to just kind of screen through before I approve people. But I do try to follow like 100 or more a day. Um, but my follow count is not nearly as high, like, <laughs> at all. But I do try to make sure that the, everyone that I'm approving that, to follow me could be a potential customer or, like, or distributor and is not a creep, basically. <laughs> um, and I used to let, like, businesses follow me because I wanted to up my follow count. But now, like, I don't want to do that because I just want to know, like, these people that follow me, they're actually real potentials. Like, they're not just a number that's making me think I have all these people watching me that aren't. And that also decreases interaction. When you have, like, a ton of boutiques following you that aren't liking your post, that makes your interaction rate go down anyway. So you want real people following you. So, like, when you post a picture that they might actually like it, whereas a business isn't going to do that. So... Um, I answer that yeah. Question yeah, no, that was perfect. <laughs> um, another thing I just wanted to ask for myself is kind of like, what do you, what do you feel like has been one of the most biggest accomplishments overall in your business? Whew. Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I think honestly is the friendships that I've made. I know that sounds really cheesy, but like, I feel like our team gets along so well. And I think that it's because everyone on my team, like not everyone, but I mean, most all of my leaders are so selfless. They are, I mean, they work their business, but they are always willing to help others. Like their sidelines, their downlines, their uplines, like they help me. And I, honestly, like, if I look back on everything, of course, like I, when I we had to add up what we had made this year for like to know how much we might be paying in taxes. And it is like incredible. Like I'm obviously really excited about it and I'm proud of it, but more than anything, like I'm proud of the relationships because we do things in such a, um, like, friendly way I guess and like we have a diamonds and above chat and we talk every day we're such good friends and we're always like encouraging each other in our teams and like willing to help each other out and so I, I feel like that is more of an accomplishment than the money in my opinion but I mean that sounds cheesy but I really just am like I when I went through my Christmas list I had like six new best friends that I have to send Christmas cards to that I didn't even really wasn't even really that close with last year and so that's just like a blessing of the, of the business that most people don't even realize, you know? And so I think that's one of the best accomplishments. But the other one I would say is like, I think I posted every single day for two years. Like, I don't think I've ever missed a day, like ever about it work. So I feel like that's like something that I'm kind of proud of because it's like your open sign. And once I realized that, I was like, okay, I don't care. I was so worried about annoying people. It's not even funny. Like, so worried. And my parents would kind of like make jokes about it that made me embarrassed. And I didn't want to embarrass my family. But I was like, you know what? This is my business. And not only am I doing this for my family, 
I have people signing up that are watching me, and if they think, oh, well, she's not posting, I don't have to either. I'm not only affecting my family negatively, I'm going to affect theirs, and I can't be responsible for that. So that was my other, I'm proud of that. <laughs> I'm gonna, that's my yeah. problem. <laughs> I know. I, I have so many. I, yeah, I don't even know if I can narrow it, it down to one. Um, yeah. Same thing happened to me. That's a hard question. You need to answer it, too. What's your most proud of you? <laughs> Um, I know I've had a feeling you're gonna ask me back and I was like, what am I gonna say? I, I really can't think of just one because it's come in so many different um, aspects across my journey. Um, as a college student though, I think I dealt a lot with negative opinions of others um, the most and being young and being kind of new to that, it was a big struggle for me in the beginning and I finally just turned around and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna prove them wrong. So that was a really big accomplishment for me. My brother and my dad, um, actually sat me down one time and I was bawling my eyes out at a restaurant because they told me basically I was not gonna take this far and I had changed my major y'all like I literally switched my major they were worried that I was not gonna have a life and I kept telling them no I am doing it works and they were just so negative about it they made me cry so that was a big accomplishment and just realizing like you can do anything that you set your mind to and so I just proved them all wrong and same thing, you know, friendships. Like, I I cannot believe sometimes that, like, I have been so blessed with this team. Like, I, I just I, – it's so, like, mind-blowing. I'm speechless. Um, you know, just being able to meet all of the people that I have all across the world, um, that's the coolest thing to me. And so I feel like that's a really big accomplishment on my behalf. And um, my team's accomplishments, that's the biggest thing for me too, is just seeing what they have accomplished and what they're going to in the future as well accomplish. It gets me so amped up. I'm like the super motivated right now. Yeah. So that's a big one. And I mean, I think that whenever you have to deal with that negativity, it's so hard when you're going through it, but don't you feel like you've grown as a person because you've like overcome it? Yeah. And I tell my team all the time, it's not the money for me. Like it really isn't. It's looking back and seeing all of the challenges that I've overcome. That is success. Like overcoming many challenges and looking back and be like, I did that. And then one day you're going to stand up on stage and you're like, I did that. <laughs> you know, that's the cool thing. You have to go through these obstacles. And then like, I realized like that was the Lord teaching me a lesson that like there was something in me that needed to change. It wasn't about them, but like it changed me and I don't necessarily want to have to go through that. But like in the end, when I can look back, I'm grateful for it, even though it's not hard when you're in the midst of it. Um, yeah. Okay. So what do you, you're, you're probably really good about this. Cause I know you've got great interaction on the, they just asked about when only your team and current loyal customers that you're liking their posts. I saw that. And I actually just wanted to address that because, um, that's where the Facebook lists come in for me because I unfollow, um, sorry team, a lot of you guys <laughs> and I put y'all into a list. And so whenever I want to go down and like love on my team, I can do that all at one time. So I will do that. And then I have a loyal customer and I go through there and I love on my current loyal customers. I will love on my, um, potential loyal customers and I will love on potential distributors. So, um, do you want me to screen share? I can share this really, really quick. Oh my gosh, that is so smart. I need to do this. <laughs> oh, and another tip I want to show you guys is Google Photos. I'm obsessed um, because you can create albums and it links right to your phone. And um, who was it? Mandy Zoll taught me this. So, I'll show you guys that to you really quick. Um, so, here's my Facebook and I'm going to my homepage and the very first thing I'm going to do is... Um, so on my like homepage, I can actually like go down and like people who aren't just it works distributors. And I struggled with that for the longest time because I just felt like my whole entire page was crowded. Mm -hmm. um, but now, do you see this friends tab over here to the left side? If you click on that, I've created a bunch of different lists. So one is like a triple threat. And I always want to teach my team that go for the higher volume because, you know, you want to be a volume here. So that's a really good set. Um, I'm thinking about doing an It Works system one because I love to sell the It Works system. Um, I do have like that serious potentials hit list and I also have it over here on the side um, for my future entrepreneurs. You're so organized. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way I can live. <laughs> um, potential LCs, I will have that. And so you can go through and actually like like on their stuff. So you can see I've already done that. I'm liking on their stuff if I wanted to comment. So cute. This is actually the girl that signed up tonight. So just loved on her stuff. You need to move to the other list. <laughs> what? 
You'll move her to the real loyal customer list now. I know, I know. So, well, sometimes I don't have a real loyal customer one right now. I kind of just keep them under potential, uh -huh. but I need That's to. I need to move that. But then anyone from It Works, like Sideline Sisters, anyone, they're under there. Um, I couldn't delete some of these. So I don't know. So, like, I guess some other groups. So, if you think about it, it's kind of cool because, like, if anybody from the University of Tennessee puts themselves into a group or if I put them into a group, then that would be there for me if I wanted that. Okay. So, that is the friends thing. Um, I think that by interacting with them, with people that are not It Works, that increases how many likes you get. They'll, like, no. like more. Okay. For sure. Um, because I can interact more with them. They're going to actually, it's an algorithm. So they can see my posts more. So if I had just a homepage full of It Works people, then I can't like and comment and love on these people that are actually interested. And every time that I like, comment, and send a message, like say I sent Brooke Hunt a message, um, that's going to like pull me up in the algorithm and Facebook like thinks we're like BFFs, so then she's going to show up more on my timeline, and so am I. I'm going to show up more on her timeline. So every single day, I go down here, and I will literally message them. This is writing on their timeline. No, I don't do that. I actually click on their name, and I will personally message the person. Why? Because they will show up in my algorithm more. So, you know, I wish her happy birthday this morning. And so she, I see her all the time on my timeline. Like, it's ridiculous. But then I'm continuing to like and comment on everybody's photos and stuff. Does that make sense? Yes, I love that. Yeah, so it's been huge. Like, huge, huge, huge for my business. Um, I absolutely love building relationships. And that's a really good way to kind of keep in track. And I'll be honest, guys, it did take some time. Like, I sat down. And w one day I was like, I'm doing this. I'm getting organized. I'm getting my stuff together. And another thing I do is um, this. So this is Google Photos, and it links to your phone as well. So if you're the type of person that, like, hates when your phone is, like, overload, like you have an iPhone, right, and your phone tells you you don't have enough storage, well, um, get Google Photos. It's an app. So can you all see this? So Google Photos is right here. Um, it's got the Google symbol. And then you can actually um, – you don't even have to upload anything to it. It automatically does that for me. So anytime something goes onto my camera roll, it goes straight to my Google Photos. So I could right now delete every single thing in my camera roll, and I would have everything in my Google Photos. And then it also automatically goes straight to my Google Photos, like every single one. All of the 10 photos. Katie taking selfies, <laughs> you know, like random stuff like that, like bikes, you know, just all of that stuff goes automatically to there. And then you can also create albums. So I have like a quotes album that I just started today. I just started a before and after album that I can use, things like that. Oh, love that. It works. You're very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, because I, I felt not so helpful when I couldn't figure out for myself, like, how to do certain things. Like when I first started, I was like, what am I supposed to be doing? You know? Um, but the biggest step I have is YouTube. Like I'm a YouTuber. I find people that I can be inspired by and then just continuously learn. I'm always, always learning. So mm -hmm. if that helps. I mean, like, I feel like if you watch just one YouTube video from a top leader a day or like a zoom or anything, there's no way you're not eventually going to grow because you're going to have some tip eventually that clicks with you. That's going to take you to the top. Like if you're going to run with, and it might take watching 10 of them, but eventually you're going to get you, that fire like rubs off on you. You get amped. You're like, Oh, I can do this. Like I got stuff to do, you know? And you just realize I, I told my team all the time at conference, I listen to so many people say I was in the back row and I just thought, why not me? And it's like the most regular people, they just decide one day, like I can do it and they do it. They just do it. And just the, when the light bulb clicks that there's nothing different and they decide I want to do it, they just do it. Like just the mindset of, deciding it is like so much of the battle that you know that's all it takes it's just deciding yeah for sure and another thing too is just always going to those events that are you know open in your area you know the one team one missions I'm always like go 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 to any event that you possibly can because even if you think you know it all you don't um, you're gonna learn one new thing two new things a million new things and you're gonna go home and you're gonna feel that motivation and I tell my team all the time that self-motivation has got to be there. If it's not, then I'm not sure what you're going to do for yourself. Um, because that inner drive 
And that why is going to take you to the top for sure. And so I've told them that there are four ways to go find some self-motivation. Um, you know, the YouTube, um, some events, um, getting a book, a personal development book is huge if you're a reader. You know, I'm on the other hand different than Ryan. He loves to read. I love to watch videos. So um, I'm going to pull up YouTube in that aspect or, um, you know, writing down things too. I have a thought journal and um, there will be times when I have that negative thought like, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm not promoting. I'm stuck. I write that down so that I can look back at it and be like, dang, Katie, you, you stinker. You need to stop that. <laughs> so um, I hope that helps. <laughs> I like that a lot. I literally think like knowing your why, whenever I wrote it down, it was so different because I'd be like, oh, my why is my kids. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to do it for my kids. But whenever I was thinking specifically, they're starting school in three years. You want to be able to pick whatever school you want and pay for it without having to go into debt. Like, and that being the forefront of my mind, that makes me more motivated than just saying my kids, like, and being a general thing, like having in my head specifically what I want to do with it. Like, Bo wanted, didn't want me to do it. I wanted to prove him wrong. And he had talked forever about how he wanted a golf cart. So I would, like, after we were, had bought other stuff and paid off some debt and stuff, I, um, cause we have no debt except for our house now, but, um, I was like, I'm going to buy him a golf cart. Like, we're going to pay cash, and I'm buying him a golf cart. And, like, that would, like, come to my mind for a while. Until we, and then I was able to do it. And I was able to prove him wrong, and it was exciting, and give him something he really wanted. And then he was excited, and he was more willing to, like, take the kids when I want to do a Zoom because he knows, like, this is paying off, you know. And, like, I, and he gets benefits out of it, too. Um, but then, like, now, like, my, my, my life is continuously changing. But if I just say my kids, it's not as – meaningful is than if I have something very very specific um you know so I'm like being able to give more to our church like and like something specific like they're doing something next Sunday where they're doing uh something for a family blessing a family like being able to give without having to sacrifice you know um and even though I, I do think it like it's good to give with a sacrifice but also like being able to give without having to you know plan in months in advance to do so is what I really meant but Okay, does anybody have any more questions? I know, like, they were so excited to have you on then. We were excited to have you on. I was like, this is a great idea. I was thinking we were going to do it separate. I was like, oh, this will be perfect. Like, we can yeah. two burns, one stone. <laughs> I know, that's perfect. Well, we need to drill you now next time more. <laughs> I, know, I feel like I felt bad. I was like, I just took over, but, like, I just really have so much information that I know she has I want to get from her. I'm just going to take it while I can. <laughs> You're good. I'm going to get you next time. <laughs> Because okay. we'll do this again. We do ours like every other week. So That's perfect. Yeah, I need to be more consistent about that. We're gonna do um we're gonna do one next week with our diamonds and above. I'm really excited about. So I can send you a recording over if you wanna see that. Okay, sounds good. Okay, well I guess no one's gonna say anything else. Anyone else? I can unmute you guys if y'all have anything. If you tell yeah, me. Yeah, ask away. Anyone? I probably will not message you back if you message me on Facebook. I'm gonna be so thousand followers, guys. She cannot message you back your questions. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, okay, I have one for you. So yeah. there is a girl that um, is really, really precious and sweet, and she feels like she is, like, plugging in and posting and messaging people, but she's, like, not getting anything, like, not getting any leads. Like, what would you say to that person? Does she feel that way? Mm -hmm. Like, she feels like she's plugging in, or is she, in your opinion, actually plugging in? Um, she's on the Zoom right now. <laughs> so that's plugging in. I would say that is, at, that's taking the leap of faith and getting in. And I mean, I wouldn't even say that's a leap of faith. I don't, I guess I'm so used to saying leap of faith. <laughs> that is building your business and uh -huh. that is getting out there and doing what you need to be doing because you are learning. And like I said, this is a journey and you should always be learning. So um, what was the question again? It's kind of like, she's like, she says that she feels like she's plugging in. She feels like she messages people and posts, but she's not getting any little customers or distributors. The questions I would ask is like, um, how many people are you messaging a day? How many people are you following? Um, cause I think the biggest thing for me was, um, in success was building that network. Um, mm -hmm. because I hit that wall and I just was like, what else could I do? And I wanted to give up. And then I realized like, no, like I'm, born for this and I'm going to find every way that I can to make that potentials list grow and grow and grow. And I'll be honest with you guys. I've been working on organizing my potential list and it's driving me insane because it's so long. Like I have so many follow-ups to do. It's ridiculous, but I guess I have to feel very thankful for that. So mm -hmm. if you feel like you've kind of hit that wall with like 
signing people up, um, look at kind of what you're doing. Take a big picture. Take a step back and put yourself into that person's shoes and be like, would I join this person if, you know, they were talking to me with a bunch of scripts? Mm -hmm. Or would I join this person if they were um, talking to me almost every day? That's what I do is I talk to my potentials every day. If they tell me they're interested, I really build that relationship like every single day. I keep them on that hit list, like I said. Um, I always make that relationship happen on the news feed, on Instagram, and on Facebook. Like, they can't get enough of me. That's how I do that. And then, um, you know, just kind of look at what you're doing. Maybe maybe that'll help. I like the – I know this is I, – I made, like, a quick video for my team about this, but and it sounds, like, kind of borderline psychotic, but – um, I like make my life, not my life, but like I make my Facebook and my Instagram business. Like I, it's like, it's a business. Of course I'm working it into my daily life, but I'm not posting every single news article I see. I'm not posting about like my best friend that sells leggings or like, I'm not hosting an us porn book party. Like I literally am only selling it works. Like that's the only thing that I'm selling. And I make sure that like every post is either about my, like my personality, my family, letting them see that I'm a real person or it's about my business in some way. And I know that sounds stupid because I mean, obviously you still want to have a life, but at the same time, like you have to realize that you are representing a business once you become a network distributor. And I think that that makes a difference. And also like, I'm really excited. Like I'm excited about the business. Even after two and a half years, it still excites me. And I feel like it's, if you aren't excited, it's because you're not using the product. You're not seeing personal product results for, on someone you know, or this business isn't changing your life because it, there's so much to be excited about. And a lot of times, if you're not excited, that shows to your potentials. And if you're not excited, why would they be? You know, why would they want to join? And I genuinely love it works. I can give you a million reasons why I'm thankful for the company. And so if maybe like you're not feeling like that, write down 20 things that it works has done for you and find that inspiration and relate in your post, relate when you're talking to your potentials. But that excitement is like infectious in a way. And so there's always going to be excited about it. You just might not remember it, but write it down and have that like fresh to your memory and it can change your attitude. Yeah, for sure. And another thing too, to ask, like you said, you know, how consistent are you? Um, so making sure that you're posting every day and, and staying excited. That's the biggest thing. You've got to stay excited because that's where the self-motivation and the drive comes from is being excited. You seeing that vision. I want every one of you guys right now to look up at me and say, I am an ambassador diamond in training. Okay, wait, I want to I wanna see that everybody do that. Yeah, I really want to see you say that. Like, I am <laughs> an ambassador diamond in training. All right, no one's saying it. Ah, say it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, all of you just said it in your head. I know you did. Okay, literally, you have to understand that, like I said, you don't just go work out and get that fab gone in one day. Like, it literally takes time. All good things take time. Say that with me. All good things take time. Okay. And that you are an ambassador diamond in training unless you stop believing in yourself. That is when you are no longer an ambassador diamond in training. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want that income? How bad do you want your family's life changed? How bad do you want it? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Okay. I'm going to stop Wait, recording. And I'll questions say. really fast? Yeah. Okay, so um, what is something that I struggle with is like um, scheduling time with my family. So, like today, I've only posted once because I feel like today is Sunday, you know, Sabbath day and all that. But then come Monday, it's like I have all this. I feel like I have so much that I have to catch up on, and I get overwhelmed, and I get bogged down, and I look at my positivity. How do you guys? Um, like schedule around family time and making sure that you set a, a you know like set aside time for your family if that makes sense uh, I can actually, oh sorry go ahead because you have the family and I don't <laughs> well I just like like I said earlier I will do it when they're in the, like when they're napping or when they're asleep basically um I will at night like I'll sometimes go through and if I, I usually try to write most all of my posts myself. Like, I don't really copy and paste very much at all. But every once in a while, if I'm, like, in a bind, I'll go to, like, someone that is a top leader that I know doesn't have a lot of mutual followers, like, not under Susan. And I'll, like, get inspiration and just kind of, like, copy and paste and tweak it if I don't have time. Because it's more important to post at all 
um, even if it is copy and pasted, than to not post. So when I'm in a bind, that's what I'll do. Or there's times where like I'll sit down and I'll write at night, like if, right before I fall asleep, I'll write like 10 posts and I'll text them to myself. And so that whenever I am like in a rush and I don't have time to sit down and write one, I can use one that I've written a while back that it's like ready to go, ready for me to copy and paste that I've written myself. So um, I know there's people that use like Scentshare and Buffer and all that, that like work full time. And I think those are great, but I don't have to do that because I don't work full time. So if you know, you want to look into those, those are great too, but I just copy and paste and like have some ready to go whenever I'm like rushed for time, rushed for time. I don't have time to sit down and write a really good one. Yes, Christine. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> but you guys are posting seven days a week like you don't take like a day no I've never I don't think I've ever missed it in like two years <laughs> yeah I haven't either um I saw someone say like how do you have time for like you and your dude um Dan and I schedule our time together all the time so we're I'm weird I love to plan out my week like I said every Monday we go to Chick-fil-a Every single night we go every Monday night. We go to chick fil -A. That's our thing every Tuesday night. We go to the movies So uh, we do schedule a lot of our time together and then we of course work the business together But um, we do know like in the movies you put your phone away and I'm okay with that Like I'm so okay with putting my phone away um, As long as I've done my work throughout the day. I reward myself so if I've done really hard work throughout my, you know, Monday tomorrow, then I get Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. If I do really hard work on Tuesday, then I get to go to the movies. But if I don't, I really will take that away from myself because um, I don't deserve it. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, Emily, I like with Bo, I'm not kidding you. He was so unsupportive in the beginning that he said to me, you are driving me nuts that works. Do not do it works when I'm at home. And like, Obviously, I thought he was being really unreasonable, and I thought that was so rude, but I honored it just because he's my husband, and I wanted to respect him, and so I had to not work at work when he was around, um, and so that was very difficult. I had to make sure I did it all, like, before he got home, and then when he got home, like, I put my phone up, and then until he went to sleep, when he went to sleep, I would work it again, but until he went to sleep, I did not do anything with it works. I didn't call people. I didn't do Zooms. I did nothing except for... Um, like spend time with him and the kids or whatever, but now he's way more understanding, obviously. Um, like he's has both the kids upstairs, but obviously I have to make times where we both put our friends away and we spend time together, but I don't necessarily, I don't, I wouldn't say I schedule it, but like, I just make sure like, even whenever we watch TV together, I can be on my phone and it doesn't bother me anymore. Like if he has something else to do, but it's just whenever you do, you're both alone, like making sure the time that you have is quality. That's like, the, that, that makes a difference, I think. And power hours, of course, are great. But I do try to do as much as I can when he's not here. Like, um, but I do, I do still do things when he's here now. But when he's not here, I really try to make sure I take advantage of the time that I have. Power hours are great, though. Okay. It's like been over an hour. I'm sorry. Like, I'm stuck. I'm keeping on. Do you might have any other questions or do you want me to stop recording now? I'll stop recording so if anybody has any questions, they don't record it, they can answer that. 